All right, welcome back everybody. Um, for our third talk of TWIST 2021, our annual user conference here at TechX. Um, I'd like to introduce Dr. Svetlana Shasharina. She is one of the co-founders of TechX, um, and she uh, one of the originals since 1994, and she will be speaking on using vSIM for photonics um, and the workflow involved with that. So on that note, Sveta, welcome. Thank you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, so I'll be switching between the PowerPoint presentations and um, live demos of, of VSIM. So uh, first of all, if you have any questions uh, after this presentation, please uh, address them either to me or just using the email for sales at txcorp.com. Uh, so the overview of my presentation, I'll briefly introduce what um, photonics is. Then I'll talk about how to set up a simulation of photonic devices using vSIM, uh, how to calculate modes of such devices, how to run simulations, how to visualize results and do analysis, particularly how to calculate S parameters. So um, I don't know how people, um, how many people in the audience are familiar with photonics, but uh, generally speaking, photonics is about creating, manipulating, and detecting light. And uh, silicon photonics plays a particularly important role in photonics because silicon is already used in traditional um, electronic design automation, in traditional uh, manufacturing of integrated circuits. And the same uh, fabs can be used to fabricate this new type of devices made of silicon. Um, quite often when people talk about silicon photonics, they also imply other materials, the electric materials, for example, uh, silicon nitrate. So that's about uh, photonics kind of outside of VSIM. When you look at VSIM, um, the, in practicality, photonics is pretty much electromagnetic simulation using the dielectric materials and the telecommunication wavelength, uh, approximately around 1.5 micron. The applications of photonics are enormous. Uh, first of all, uh, the data rates which are requested by more modern telecommunications and data centers cannot be supported by uh, the metal anymore. So you have to switch to uh, new kind of um, uh, switches and uh, transmitting media. So uh, basically photonics is a must for 5G applications, for uh, optical computing, for all kinds of telecommunications, for data centers, for self-driving cars using um, LiDAR uh, sensors. So um, that said, um, that's why I'm so excited about photonics. Let's switch gears and talk about how photonics can be modeled in VSIM. First of all, uh, the uh, structure of the setup in VSIM consists of several elements. Uh, the first one is basic settings, then geometry, materials, uh, light source, and diagnostics. So uh, basic settings, um, let me show you, uh, first of all, how it looks at um, VSIM. So basic settings, um, if you open SIM, you'll see uh, two, it's, it's the um, setup tab and you'll see the tree view of the setup and you also see the uh, visualization of the setup. So basic settings go under here and you'll see multiple things there, but of particular interest, especially for the novice user of this SIM would be dimensionality, which is typically three for this um, simulations. Then uh, background permittivity. Uh, by background, background permittivity, we mean the material which surrounds all the visible shape. For example, if you have uh, a silicon wire surrounded by air, you don't want to create uh, a cube of air. You just specify the background permittivity being one. Or if you have uh, silicon embedded in silica, CO2, you specify background uh, permittivity to be uh, corresponding to silica. Another interesting um, setting here is a dielectric solver. And you can see that we have two types of dielectric solver here. It's permittivity averaging and point permittivity. Uh, to um, understand what it is, uh, I created these two pictures here. Uh, 
this uh, is a human head, which is represented by the point permittivity, which is pretty much stair-stepping representation of the boundary, and the average permittivity, which creates the smooth representation of the boundary. The smooth representation for the boundary is much more reliable, but it takes more memory. And um, so you can try uh, first playing with point permittivity if you want just quick and dirty uh, simulation and see how everything is going. But for um, second order accurate results, you will need the uh, permittivity averaging. So this is the ba main basic settings to pay attention to. What's the next um, step in setting up the simulation? A geometry in VSIM can be created either by hand in the setup or can be imported as a CAD file. By manual creation, I mean just using the primitives um, which are provided by VSIM GUI, and I'll show you um, them in a second. And, um, and you can also manipulate on them uh, by creating arrays of them, like you can create three-dimensional, two-dimensional, one-dimensional array of these primitives. You can also operate um, on them uh, by applying Boolean operations, such as intersections, unions, and subtractions. Uh, but for photonics simulations, uh, the most important uh, form of geometry is presented by GDS files. GDS files is the uh, kind of inheritance from electronic design um, automation. And they are, it, it is a, a binary format which describes the um, etching on the wafer. So they are um, inherently two-dimensional, but the, um, the structures which are modeled by this sim are three-dimensional. So we basically extrude this uh, GDS files to create three-dimensional structure. Let me show you um, an example of GDS files here. So um, let me get rid of this one. And let me show you a pretty complicated example. Um, this, is, um, this is the example of GDS file, which consists of, of pretty much 29 layers. And it was just imported in uh, VSIM. And uh, you can further edit it by um, uh, right-clicking on the shape, and uh, you can see edit GDS layers. And um, you, uh, after that, this window will appear, and you see all the layers by name, and you can edit Z location, which is a start, you know, basically the, the, the lower coordinate of the layer, the thickness, and you even can edit the sidewall um, angle here, which is a new feature, and um, I will not uh, dare to do it in the demo mode. So you can also assign materials to each layer if you wanted to. Um, so that's how you edit the three-dimensional structure here. You can also, it's a pretty heavy, it takes a little bit of time. So you can also play with um, uh, GDS Boolean operations. And uh, when you click on GDS Boolean operation, you can see that you can operate on any layer. Uh, you can uh, click on any number of layers of all the avail available shapes here. And you can do intersection of layers, union, um, subtraction, and XOR operation. So why it is useful? Uh, some customers whose name I cannot really pronounce uh, challenged us with the GDS files, which um, uh, in three dimensions, when you try to interpret them in three, three dimensions, you need to create uh, something which uh, is called deep edge by intersecting two layers and shallow edge by uh, subtracting these two layers. So specifically for these customers, we created this tool and uh, which allows us to create this changing, um, uh, basically the changed depth of the etching if needed. So returning to my presentation here. So uh, another way to create geometry is to uh, use the uh, primitives which are provided by, uh, by um, this sim. For example, here I show uh, the ring resonator and the ring resonator is a structure which consists of the input waveguide, a ring, the output waveguide. So basically, um, you uh, put the, uh, you shoot the light at the bottom. It goes through this uh, waveguide. It gets captured by the ring, and um, it comes outside of the output ports. So um, 
to create this shape, this, uh, this circle, for example, we just use two cylinders and we subtra did subtraction of these two cylinders and how the, that's how the ring was created. So if you're working with primitives, you can create a bunch of them. Um, I can just show you a little bit how to do that here, geometry. You can just add any uh, number of primitives here and to play with them. But once again, uh, uh, GDS probably is more important for the workflow relevant to workflows. Um, proceeding, so I already talked about uh, GDS here. Uh, examples of GDS uh, geometries are shown here. Uh, here at, at the, on the left, you see uh, the so-called Y splitter, which is, um, you know, you can see the input here uh, and the light gets split in two directions. Uh, a more advanced, more interesting device is shown on the right. It's called arrayed waveguide grating. It's a multiplexing, demultiplexing device. And uh, it's, um, um, it's of use for uh, switches and for telecommunications. You can um, start with a signal which comes from the top here and consists of mul multiple wavelengths. And due to the very uh, interesting intricate structure of these waveguides, the signal gets split into um, outcoming waveguides, and each waveguide will have a single frequency. So um, this is um, uh, this is why photonics is very interesting because it allows you to pack uh, lots of information in one signal and uh, demultiplex it at the end. Boolean operations, um, I showed them a little bit quickly, and um, uh, I just documented everything on the presentation for your perusal later. So um, once you create the geometry, you need to assign materials to geometry. And, um, switching to um, BISM, uh, we can see the material database, um, and you can switch from the regular view to material database by clicking here. And you can see that um, this same comes with uh, several uh, predefined materials. And if your material is not here, you can always use custom material and just add it to the simulation. And custom material then have, um, you can just, for the photonics simulation, you can uh, define co conductivity and relative permittivity. And, uh, and you, uh, off to go, you can even create silicon nitride, for example, here and assign it to whatever you need. So assigning uh, of materials uh, happens here, uh, let's, um, by clicking on the shape and after the double clicking on the material here and you can assign material, um, you know, it was pre-assigned pre before silicon, but you can reassign to something else here. So that's how you assign materials in uh, BSM. Um, so uh, now we have a geometry set up and the geometry, uh, all geometries have materials. So what, uh, what is next for the photonic simulation is specification of the light source. And light sources in um, VSIM can be created by using uh, fields, basically electromagnetic fields or currents. And um, uh, each source uh, will have uh, two components to that. Uh, it will have uh, the time dependency component and the space distribution component. For the time dependency, uh, you can use a bunch of pre-built functions and I'll show you in, in a second. For the space distribution, you also can um, use pre-built functions. For example, for many examples, we use just simple Gaussian distribution or you can provide an external file with a profile of a mode, for example. Let me show you uh, on this example that we have here. Um, so this example uh, has um, external mode launching field. And uh, you can add this by uh, just right clicking on the field and you can add field and you can do one more external mode launching field. That's how this thing is ended up here in the simulation. And if you look at the parameters of this external mode launching field, you'll see that, um, first of all, it's a description, it says it's a 2D field, and it, um, this 2D field is located right here, it's visualized. Uh, then temporal variation is pulse. And before that, I created this pulse. 
uh, which was uh, specified as a, um, one of the available functions here. And uh, I used uh, the so-called sync, uh, sync head function. And sync head function is the function um, of the pulse, which uh, if you transform it uh, using a Fourier transform, you'll end up with a, with a wide frequency band, which is limited by the um, min and max frequency. So, uh, so you can see that pulse is specified here by the low frequency, high frequency, and uh, other things. You can specify amplitude, which is not relevant because everything will be just multiplied by this amplitude. There's other th things, suppression factor and um, frequency gap, which I don't recommend the noises to change uh, at this point. Uh, I will just use them as they are. So uh, this is the pulse in the external mode launching field. But uh, the space, um, the space profile of this uh, source, which is specified here, is uh, specified by the HDF5 file, and the name of the file here is ring resonator mode eigen D VSH5. So how did I, how do I find this mode? How I do cre create this file? Um, you can do it by um, using the new feature of DSM, which is called prepare. It's a prepare tab. Uh, so let's save setup. And the prepare tab here is, it's still saving it. Um, so in, in the future, we, we, we could actually imagine multiple types of prepare steps. But right now what we have only one type of prepare um, setup and it just calculates the mode. So um, you can specify to do this prepare, uh, prepare step anytime you run the simulation. And here I just do it once. And uh, you can specify number of modes you're interested in and the number of, um, and the field that you're interested in, you know, you can specify more. I know that the, the uh, space, um, I know that the mode of the single waveguide is very simple and we just need only one mode to calculate the, um, to, to find what we need. So uh, once, uh, I'm not going to do it in real time because it will take just a little bit um, too much time, not too much, but you know, a couple of minutes. But once you specify what you want to find, you click on prepare button. Uh, the under the hood, VSIM will run um, simulation for one step it will create the um, uh, permittivity profile. Then it will run the mode calculation for this profile, create the file for you. And now you are ready to, to, to go because this file for you will be created at this point. So returning to the PowerPoint. Um, so um, I went through this already. It's just documented for uh, your in inspection after the presentation. You basically use sync head function to create wide uh, band uh, frequency uh, signal. Then you add external launching field. Um, then you run the prepare step, create the uh, profile, and um, you're ready to go. But um, it will not do anything good to you if you don't specify any diagnostics. And diagnostics of, of uh, interest for photonics are um, uh, listed here. So first of all, the terminology. Uh, what, uh, what we call history in VSIM is, um, is a diagnostic which combines, uh, combines data from each time step. But some simulations uh, of VSIM are really, really huge. And we don't want to um, collect data from the all grids um, available for the simulation. And we create a smaller subsections of the simulation, for example, a little planes or points, and we collect data of subset of simulation. And such um, diagnostic, which collects uh, data from each time step in a subset of simulation, it's called a history in this sim. So uh, the histories of interest for photonics are uh, electromagnetic field on the plane, field in a position, and pointy, pointing flux on the plane. So to add them to the simulation, you just uh, scroll down here, go under history, right click on history, and you can uh, see all the histories which have interest to you here. So 
when I was creating the simulation, I did exactly that. And I added several uh, EM, EM field on a plane. And you can see them here. Let me enlarge them here. So we have um, one, two, three, four, five uh, histories on the plane. And we're collecting um, electric and magnetic field on this plane. And using this electric and magnetic field on the plane, we'll calculate the pointing flux in each of these planes. And then integrate this pointing flux over the plane and translate it to the frequency domain to calculate so-called S parameters. So once the simulation is set up, you um, go back to what we have here. So we have everything set up. We have geometry, materials. We have um, the launching field, the source. We have the diagnostics of interest to us in the four slabs here. And uh, so we're ready to run. We can go to run panel. And uh, that's how the run panel in this sim looks like. So we have, um, we can switch between the parameters of the run panel and the run mode. And parameters here are the time step. And um, this sim calculates the time step for you. So I would recommend uh, not to play with it, just to use the default. Or if you actually um, want to, to risk a little bit and calculate, say, with um, bigger time step just to see what happens. You can create um, your own custom time step here uh, and um, or you can just assign time step from the previously calculated things in the setup here. Um, then uh, for the number of steps uh, for the photonic simulation, uh, first you can just do, um, you know, basically propagation of the wave till the end of the device. But if you need to do um, the frequency domain analysis, you need to wait till the signal pretty much dies out. And the good rule of thumb here would be to calculate number of steps that you need to reach the end of the device. You multiply it approximately by 10. And uh, here's your number of steps that will give you reasonable S parameters at the end. So um, now you specify the parameters of the um, runtime. Uh, then I would recommend if you have a, a parallel machine to run in parallel. For example, right now I have a number of processes available for me is six. So I will run with six processes here. And of course I will not run 60,000 steps in front of you. I already pre-ran the simulation. Uh, and um, once the simulation is run, you'll see this magic um, uh, magic thing at the end. You're ready to visualize it. And uh, so I typically go to visualize panel here. So uh, when you switch to visualize panel, you can um, add as many uh, window, uh, windows as you want. And I added several here. And I would recommend uh, for each type of data that you have, uh, for example, you might have um, three-dimensional data for the simulation results. You might have two-dimensional data for the mode. You uh, might have one-dimensional data for the S parameters. I would recommend to use separate windows because uh, it's just clear for you what you are uh, visualizing here. So on this window, I added um, data overview and it's a three-dimensional overview. and. Um, uh, you can see that I clipped the plot uh, and um, I use the, uh, I use just one plane here and it's, uh, it uh, plots, uh, it, it cuts in pretty much um, uh, basically, basically simulation you can see um, just in one plane cut. So of, um, if you switch to the time, different time steps, you'll see how the electromagnetic field propagates in this device. Uh, this is DZ, um, DY is typically um, more interesting here because I need to clip it. So uh, this is a really useful debugging tool. And uh, it's also uh, very useful for create nice PowerPoint presentation, a little eye candy for fund funding agency of your clients. So I like to play with this. 
Uh, another uh, way to look at the simulation data would be to say to look at the materials uh, which were created by the simulation. And uh, you can do it by plotting inverse epsilon and uh, doing a couple of cuts here, which I created previously here. So I created a cut in two planes. And once again, it's um, very useful for debugging and uh, for other purposes as well. Uh, another thing I created here is two-dimensional. Basically, I, uh, if you remember, I pre-calculated the mode. And here, I just visualized the mode here. It's two-dimensional data, and it's useful to have a special view for that. Uh, so you can play with this, um, you know, let me here, let's see here, what did it did here. So here, I just plotted the external mode launching field. You can slightly see it here. It's just right there. And I wanted to make sure that this launching field is going to the input waveguide. So in addition to that, I plotted the input uh, waveguide geometries. So visualization is um, very useful for debugging. And uh, you can also play with individual's controls here. So each plot will have individual control for opacity. You can also specify uh, different uh, color schemes, uh, whichever is pleasing to you. Um, you know, some people which are more artistic, they like very bright ones. Some people more scientific, they like, uh, like magma uh, visualization tool uh, and so forth. So um, this is visualization. So we have the setup, we run the simulation, we visualize the results, but what's the most relevant for um, photonics is the calculating of S parameters and I'll switch to um, S parameters here. So uh, first of all, people who are not familiar with S, uh, with S parameters, S parameter is the ratio of, in, of two integrated fluxes. Basically you have input and output port and you specify the uh, dimension of these ports as just two rectangles and you calculate, integrate the power flux going through these ports. You translate it into frequency domain using a Fourier transform. And uh, after that, you just calculate. And you can define as many S parameters um, as you need, depending on how many, um, uh, how many uh, rectangles uh, or monitors you put in your simulation. So to calculate uh, S parameters in VSIM, you go to Analyze panel. And, um, um, and um, you see that we have tons of analyzers which, can, which come with VSIM. And the one which is of interest to you is called compute S parameters overlap integral dot pi. So you find this thing uh, in the list of here and you click on open here and I already opened it before. And once you click on open this Oh, this uh, an analysis script will show its input um, variables here on the left. And um, uh, so basically to, um, to perform this analysis, you have to specify the, minim the minimal wavelength and the maximum wavelength in the vacuum, which is of interest to you. Then you specify the uh, input and output slab here and um, the rest is um, for more intricate analysis, and I will not just describe it um, uh, at this point. By default, you just use all number of steps available to you, so that's why you don't have to specify anything. Then you um, do click Analyze, and it just starts analyzing for you. It's just running, um, running for you right now, but I just see that I, I made an error, which I'm not going to show to you. So I pre-ran it before and um, I loaded this data into VSIM and uh, this data appears as 1D fields. And uh, here you see the plots, which are pretty typical plots for S parameters uh, calculations for the ring resonator. So on top, the, you see the, um, let me show it in the setup what's going on here. Basically, uh, S, what you see on top is the, um, S matrix between this input and this output. And what you see on, um, on, uh, on the bottom here is 
using this put and this output here uh, at the top here. So uh, this is a good result, and uh, that shows the resonant uh, character of this ring resonator device. So, um, so basically, that's uh, all I wanted to show you at this point, and you're welcome to ask questions. Looks like we I mean, have do we have any questions? Yeah, it looks like we have one question mm -hmm. um, asking about um, the prepare tab. Um, mm -hmm. The prepare tab looks really interesting. What do you expect that will be used for? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, basically uh, the big vision here for prepare tab, right now we use just for calculate mode, but I can imagine um, that um, we have automated workflow. So uh, prepare tab will be something which will prepare a simulation, uh, which is always needs to be done uh, to, uh, to, for example, into optimization loop. If you change um, any parameter in the setup, uh, you move one ring versus, um, in, you know, versus the uh, some other geometry. So change anything for setup, you have to recalculate the mode. So the prepare tab, if I click here, always run before the engine run, will um, automatically uh, recreate this mode or do any other pre-calculation we need to do in the optimization loop. Similarly, um, in the analyze, what I um, envision here uh, would be another little button say saying, always run this post-processing step when you run a uh, simulation. It means that I can then do optimization loop, extract the, um, uh, I finish the simulation, automatically extract the figure of merit, feed it to the optimization engine, and it will then um, automatically conclude the optimization loop. So basically this prepare tab and in the future automated um, post-processing run, which enable us, will enable us optimization. Um, it looks like we have another question that says um, about GDS exports. Um, is there anything mm -hmm. under consideration on surface roughness simulations? On what is it? On me. GDS exports. Yes. So right now, uh, what we can do uh, with GDS export, we import GDS, then we can do Boolean operations and we can uh, export it. So um, that's what we can do. Um, in the future, I believe that uh, we should be able to manipulate the polygons for optimization um, because optimization is basically the next step for us and export it in, into GDS because GDS is pretty simple uh, format to write. Great. Um, other questions? We have we have sped up for just a little bit longer. If anyone has anything else, they want to type in the Q&A. Um, I think that might be it for what we have for today. OK, thank you so much. No, thank you so much for such a good presentation. We will be back tonight at 5.30 Mountain Time for Dr. Salvador Sosa and Trudy Bolin from the University of New Mexico. Um, and again, if anyone is interested in evaluating our software, please visit the TechX website at txcorp.com and we can get you the latest version for 30 days. Thank you so much and we will see you all um, in a few hours.